Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Advent of Code 2019 in Erlang through some ad hoc unedited video. Uh, today is day 14, and uh, I'm not sure it's going to be as fun as day 13 was with the Brick Break game, but we'll see what we get. So, we've got a little planet here. And as I approach the rings of Saturn, your ship's low fuel indicator turns on. There isn't any fuel here, but the rings have plenty of raw material. Perhaps your ship's refinery union brin factory can return these materials into fuel. Right, list of the reactions that can perform be relevant to this process. This is my puzzle input. Every reaction turns some quantities of specific chemicals into output chemicals. Every, oh, this is going to be important, I guess. Every chemical is produced by exactly one reaction. The only exception is ore, which is the raw material input to the entire process and is not produced by our reaction. How much ore will you need to collect before you can produce one unit of fuel? Each reaction and key specific quantities for inputs and outputs reaction is going to be partially run. So only the whole integer multiples, okay. If one A to B to D and then exactly two units of chemical D, exactly. All right, no floating points. That's good. First example, ten ore for ten A, one ore for one B. Blah blah blah. Okay. Only use ore, but the others use more to fuel. Okay. Suppose you have the following reactions. Yep. I'm wondering if the... No, it doesn't have an impact. I was wondering if the number of letters implied how many ingredients they have, but it doesn't make sense. It's 165 more to produce one fuel. Yeah. Okay. I hope I don't have to produce all the steps. Some larger. Okay. At least they give us plenty of tests. That's good. I'm not going to read all of these by hand, but... But yeah. Fuel is not always in the right order. So I'm guessing this is going to use either a graph or a map that is structured like a graph. But it cannot be a tree. Uh, just because, which one is it? Yeah, a lot of them depend on the same nodes, and you have a single root, so it cannot be a tree. It, have to, it has to be a kind of graph, uh, whether you make it explicit or not. What is the minimum amount of ore required to produce exactly one fuel? So, I'm going to start with a simple one and make tests. Um, I'm looking at it, and there are two ways I see this going. Um, day 14, sweet. And the reason I see this going two ways is that because of how this is structured, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to start from the fuel and go, you know, I need 7A, I need 1E, and then recursively go into this and go, well, for 7A, I'm going to need uh, 10 ore that's going to produce 10A. Then I'm going to have some excesses in this one. And for 1E, I'm going to need another 7A and 1D. And as I go down in there, oh, 7A, it's still going to be 10 ore. But then I have to start, you know, tracking all the um, surplus I have in what I produced. And it's easy to think of a case here where 1D is still a 7A and 1C, and then 1C here is still 7A and 1B. And so you have to track them as you go. And there's one thing that exists that I think might be uh, an interesting approach. And let's see if it's in the 
that graph module. The thing that I'm not interested in doing is having that kind of recursive descent where I track all the things, do my accounting at every step, have to return them up. Like it's conceptually kind of simple, but I know that in practice it's going to be kind of annoying. And there is a function called top sort, the topological sort in um, a graph. And what this does uh, is the key is there for each vertex in the return list. No out neighbors occur earlier in the list. And the reason why this is important is that this will give me a list where if I sort them all, they might just give me, you know, uh, in order few d uh, then by the order d I think because nothing else borrows a b and a and this will give me that no matter what I do so what I could do for example here is start accumulating a list that's going for few I'm going to need 7a and 1e then when I reach e I know that I can start you know eating up this one here and then it's going well e requires 7a and 1d and that gives me 14a oops and then when i reach d i know i can start decomposing the d already because nothing else that follows will require d in it so now i have 1c and i now have 21a then when i reach b well b is going to uh, let me break down my thing Uh, no, when I reach C, yeah, not when I reach C, because when I reach C, I say, okay, I can produce my C, I need only one C, that will give me uh, the need for one B, 28A, and then when I reach um, B, same thing, now I need only one or, and I still have 28A, and then how many do I need to produce 28A? Well, I will need 30 or for that, and I will have a leftover of, uh, and I will have the leftover there. The leftover will be known only at the end um, because I need a 28A and I get 30. I know at the last step or at the last layer the kind of surplus I have. And those are going to be really, really easier to count that way rather than having the full recursive function. So I'm going to use this form of a topological sort in everything I do. So and I'm hoping that this will turn out to be a good idea. Maybe it will turn out to be super useful or break in the next step, but I have a feeling that it's going to be much, much easier to manipulate uh, all I have with this. So I'm just going to name them extremely simply. This is graph one. I don't care for the rest in here. Actually, it might make sense for these to actually use. Uh, I don't care about the test name. I have the config and I will make sure that I don't leak resources. So. And those are all going to be cyclic graphs. And what's in the graph function? It's digraph delete. All right. This is going to be way simpler to do that way. 
I'm cheating with the formatting. That's going to give ugly code, but easy code. And the result they expected for this one was, I think that was 30, right? Oh. No, that's the above list. So 30A is produced. 31 OR is required. To graph and see if I give it again, the fourth the 4G and to produce fuel. And that should be. 31. So I'm going to start simply with this one and just run it. Now I got the little warnings. Of course, it will fail the first build because nothing exists. Now, oh, yeah. I need to go fix day five for some reason. I can't remember why they're broken, but they are. Okay. That was two, and the other one I needed was Okay, so um, each line is going to be string, like seams of string with a line break. So that is going to be giving me lines. And then for each line, the thing I will want is to break it into two halves. Um, so I'm going to have the, uh, the depths and the product uh, and the result. Yeah. The result are going to be equal to breaking Oop, I'm going to take a single line for each line. Oh well. Uh, let's on that arrow. I'm going to uh, I will need to parse all my vertices first. All right, so that's going to give me these. So um, oh yeah, I will need to store the count of each in a graph, but I can do this by putting a weight on each of the vertices. So considering I have the depths, I have the result in these. So now I am in here. So I'm going to make another section of these. Um, Yeah, I don't need to do it that way. Wait a second. God, shorter night tonight than usual. Not the fastest brain in the West. All right. And for each step, I will essentially just call string trim. Nope. Oh, well. Here it should be on the line G. 
Jesus, this is going to be a difficult one just because my mine is not there at all. For this, I'm going to break them in lines because that's the output I have. And now here, I will, in a loop, let's do it ugly. Uh, All right, I can be producing arbitrary counts of these, right? Because I could be producing nine of something. Okay. So let's see what this gives me as an intermediary output. So I'm going to give me Shell input for these. I'm just going to return this little one is what I'm going to return. I'm just going to do it progressively instead. Um, sweet lord. Uh, so this is going to be just the lines and I need to kickstart my brain today. Clearly, um, I have, I think, a decent idea for the thing, but not the rest. Look, everything I do in the code is bad right now. So, <laughs> zero trust on myself. G isn't used. I don't care. Yeah, that's just a warning. Called OR is undefined. Who gives a crap? Just one. Okay. So that breaks them down. That's good. So for each of the lines I have, I'm going to want to have all my vertices. And this is going to be done by taking uh, I'm just going to parse the count on the result where the result is this in the lines. Parsing the count is going to be uh, just a string and I'm going to use and here we're just Trim this one and break the list, and that should give me a string integer and then the name of the thing. So here it's going to be name. I could do it with regular expressions, expressions, but I've decided a long time ago that I don't want to use regular expressions for all the things. Okay, so that gives me all my nodes. So for each of them, what I'm going to do is uh, name count is going to be equal to parse count of my result in here. And I'm going to name and s the count is going to be the label that I use in this and that will let me fetch them however I want I no longer need this vertices and but now I'm ready to build my graph with the edges and so all my edges are going to be that graph Uh, okay. 
uh, the edge addition. Let's add edge with a label. Okay, yeah. All the edges are going to be unique, so I'm going to use this one. Vertex one to vertex, vertex one to vertex two, with a label which is going to be the count of each. Okay. And the count. And to do this, I will need once again to have depths and the result and the lines. I will still need the name. Oh, this is going to be. V1. I'm going to flip the graph around so that the fuel points to all its dependencies. Uh, V2. And I don't care for its count. It's going to be equal to the parse count of the result here. That's going to be a freebie then for each depth in the depths. what I'm going to do for them is do the same parsing. So I will have the V2 for it, and then the count is going to be equal to the parse count of the depth, I believe. Okay, and so that should work. Um, but before doing that, here's what I'm going to do to comment that one line out. and. And then I will see if it makes sense. Nope. Syntax error on line 30. Curtis. Yeah, of course. Actually, if you're doing graphs, it's better to use the little OK line here because the compiler is smart enough to know that you're not using the result of the list comprehension and then does it without building an accumulator. It just flattens it entirely. What did I break on this one? Oh, the dips have not been broken down. Uh, like seams, and those will be dips on a comma. There we go. Fuel for 7A. 1E, 1E, 1D, 1E, 7A, D, 7A. And I don't have like fuel direct dependency on A, so my graph is going to be fine. Here we go. And now we've got the two graph, uh, and we are now in counting OR with the start point. And here, what's interesting is that I can do the day graph util, is it plural, singular? singular. Uh, this is utils, top sort of G, and I'm going to return that and see what I get in my test output. And here we go. That's the exact order of processing I wanted for my things. So count or from the graph, I will give me the start point. I will give me the list of things to process is going to be this one. Um, I'm just going to count. I'm just going to count the materials that I need, and I will start with this. So to go down recursively on these, I use my graph. When I will be done is when what I'm counting is or. Don't even need to make it there. Right. Yeah, or is not even in the list. So the end of my recursion. Oh, yeah, I need to have an accumulator of all the things I have. And right now I have 
only one fuel. This is this is my start point actually. And so Okay, yeah, this is the start point. I'm going to put it here in the collar. Because if I wanted to have fifty of them I could. And my start point is going to be in the accumulator of the things I have. So I will be done when I have this. I can return the accumulator with all the things in there. Which hopefully should be a bunch of ore. Then I have the graph here. What I'm going to have is a count of a material or of a thing or a, of an X object and then the rest in the order. Uh, nope, this one is only the material name. That's right. And here I have my accumulator. So for this, what I can go do is um, Nigraph the vertex and here uh, the vertex I have gives me the label directly and this is what I'm going to use. So Nigraph vertex of G H is that it or it's a special thing. No, that's the out neighbor's call. That's not what I want. It's out neighbor vertex. Okay, GP, yeah. What V is a vertex? Is this just a vertex name? No. Okay. Oh yeah, D. I'll show you what I was annoyed here. Um, so the reason why I'm uh, kind of annoyed with that is that let me see, JGraph add vertex. G A label and then digraph vertex G B label label two and then digraph add edge from G from A to B with the label uh, let's say that's a count when I work with this um, from J to E A gives me this but to get the edge from A to B, I believe it's a bit different in there. And um, yeah, there is a when you fetch the edge and you get um, an edge count like that, it returns you a kind of extract uh, term. So digraph out edges from A in the graph you'll see this one and that's what I was trying to avoid because this value is what I need to input but only for the edges for the vertices I'm fine so this is going to give me uh, h and the count is equal to this and now I need to go look in my accumulator for all the matters of this type that I have um, and so Let's see how I'm going to handle that accumulator. I could just use, yeah, okay. Um, I'm just going to lists. Needed is going to be the list sum of. In that list here, when I did my little, oops thing in the test suite, uh, when I reduce them down, I did it progressively. Uh, that's probably a good idea. So I'm just going to go sure, seek in this one. Um, list key find H1 in the accumulator. Oh, you know what? I'm going to use a map. I'm 
going to use a map, so my start is going to be count and the start. I think this is what I put the other side, yes. So for my start, I just need this count in there. That's going to be much, much faster as an approach. So need is going to be maps get start, uh, not start, the age value in the accumulator. And I'll set a default value of zero. If I need nothing, I need nothing. Now, um, so the count might be greater than what I need. If the count is smaller than what I need, if C is smaller than what is needed, then the value I will need to fetch is one. There's a way to do this with Also need the graph. Yeah, so here are my graph outages, and that's the one where I'm going to need to. It's not edge. What's the name of it? Uh, yeah, edge exists, but it's going to be the name of the edge itself. Okay. G E where for each E I get this. So I will get the key, the two things and the count of this. Diagraph outages. So it's going to be the edges of the grids starting at H and this is going to be a thing in there. And then for each edge, the thing I'm going to want is um, the name and the count needed for each of them. And that's going to be the edge of And so this here will give me a pair of the format name count there uh, to avoid the uh, shadowing warnings that the compiler will give me. And those will be the dependencies with the counts. Okay. So I know how many I need of this. Uh, so uh, if I need seven of this, but the, the count I have in the other one is this. So if I, if I have a count of seven, but I need four, I'm going to need to, so, so is this giving me something greater than one? So if I have seven and I need four, I'm fine. Uh, I hope that's not the thing, right? The thing is, if I have four and I need seven, I'm going to get a zero. And when I do that, I'm going to need to multiply my amount to get this until I have remainders. But I think I can just multiply them. That's the thing, right? So uh, by doing this, my needed count, I will have made it so um, in my map, my current value will be set to zero. I know it's in there. It will become zero because I've replaced it with
all the dependencies I have. That's the thing, right? So. Uh, Jesus. My brain is mush this morning. I have a... <laughs> Okay, if it's just one, it's easy. So the thing that is confusing me is that, you know, here, I need nine of this. That produces eight of these. How many productions of this time I need to get my count? And this is going to be, that's a thing, if I have nine of, if I have 48 of HKG DWs and that produces fine, that's just going to be 48 divided by five. That's going to be, was it 48.50? 48 divided, that's 9.6. So I will need 10. So I get this. I get this. There are remainders. Okay. So. Uh, this is going to be produced and needed. Maybe just giving easier name is going to make it simpler. So what I'm going to do is need and divided by produced is going to give me needed is 48 produced is five. And what I'm doing here is just thinking through uh, the math I don't have this morning. But if I do this, the amount I produce is still not good enough because if I had a flat number, so let's say if I produce them in batches of two, then I know that this would be right. So I need just to add one in such a case. That's it. So this is telling me that I have a leftover. So if it's equal to zero, my count is going to be fine. So batches is going to need it, divided by produced, plus one if the other value is greater than zero. So this is true. I'm not sure this is fine, but that's what the tests are going to be for. All right. So that gives me my batches. So for each of these, then I can do batches times this. And that will give me all my dependencies. And now what I need to do is add each of these dependencies to my map. So uh, that's already 40 minutes, Jesus. Uh, I can merge map, but I can mer update with. Yeah, that's the one I want. update with when I have a key, just add the values to what I had because I could have had more. So here, lists, fold left, fun, this is going to be uh, the name and the count, and here I have a map, and for each of these I will want maps, update, with, and the font is going to value one, value two. Yep. 
he found anything in the map. But can we find on the old value to get a new value? Okay, that's fine. That's what I need. Uh, what are the arguments? Memory of a goldfish. The key is going to be this. The fun is going to be the old value, and this is going to be the old plus the count. And, and if it doesn't exist, just give me the count in the map. This is that function. It is too long. So let's reinvent this little buddy. And for default, I'm going to start this with the accumulator being my accumulator here, where I've set this one to zero. And the list is going to be the depths. Then let's see what I get on this one. Uh, 35. Huh. But I should have got an A in my things in here. There. Uh, damn it. If that doesn't work, I'm going to be annoyed. Oh, I'm not recursing. <laughs> genius in here and so count G T Iraq I feel that this is terribly ugly code but yeah or is not in there so I'm going to do a thing in my graph because or is not in it. And the count is one for this one. And see what that gives me. Uh, What? Oh, that's what I'm fetching in a map at some point, that means. Oh. Forget this. What if instead I'm not resetting the current value to zero? And I can just carry all the things around. What does this give me? Here we go. So, I'm guessing that the thing I need then is where in my map? Why am I not getting the or in my map? That's the thing, right? I'm supposed to have these lists with or in them. Oh, they are never produced. Okay. That's the thing, because I add all my vertices on the right hand side here, or is not going to be in there. So I am going to uh, vertex photograph where I have the or with the value of one. I don't care what it is, just so it exists. I thought I would get or at some point in the steps. Okay, so the way I add my vertices is not necessarily good enough because 
Oh, I think this is it. All right. The edges I added did not exist because the vertex did not exist. So I'm going to just start with this one so they are always present. Ah, uh, there we go. <laughs> that makes more sense. And so called or is going to be this, and I am going to just get maps get or out of this one. And that's the end of my result. Let's add more tests now. Sure, why not? Let's do this one. Base mode. This is going to be the second graph. Hopefully this is fast enough at that point. Um, this is going to explode, so here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to just trim this one. Uh, no, it's the line I want to trim. going to slow down the solution slightly, but I assume that here it's 1 through 3, 1, 2 is day 14 count of G1 and fuel. Let's see what we get for this one. So that works, and that seems to be very, very fast. So let's try their big S one, because I assume it's more complex. And, uh. <laughs> okay, 171 or I think is the beginning of it, because I don't want to lose eight C Z and T R. Yep. Okay. Configuration of this G is. to my paste mode. That's better. And this is going to be... I'm glad that at least it seems to work because I'm clearly good enough to think about the high level stuff but not right now to do the low level stuff without a problem. So I need to start setting that test case to run. That's pretty solid now. Okay, I trust this to be right. So, uh, this is going to be And um, to graph of G, um, advent input, the 40. Oh, I think I haven't grabbed my input yet. The private directory, day 14. And how large is this? That's not super large. That should be very, very fast. Um, all right, and then what I wanted to do was called or of G, and I'm coming on. How did I declare this? In this test case, it's just one view. One. All right. That was pretty instant. 
five milliseconds to calculate the thing. Okay, so this is probably a sign that the second part is going to be a wild ride, but I hope not. 27, that worked. Okay, uneven number. Continue to part two. Check your cargo hold. One trillion units of ore. That much given ore. Given one trillion ore, what is the maximum amount of fuel you can produce? Okay. Um, so I know that right now I'm producing this much ore without much of a problem. Uh, I know that it's extremely short and that they want me to flip the problem around. So a kind of approach for that is probably going to just, you know, search by hand. So um, what I could do for example here, I could decide to search for two fuels. And um, what I will do with this is if I run this, then in about half the time, I've gotten, you know, a bigger amount. So what I will do is search how many fuels I need to get the uh, maximum amount of fuel below one trillion. And to do these kinds of search, the very, very naive way uh, would be to just, you know, count or G uh, and fuel and try them all in an increasing matter until you reach uh, the amount you need. Uh, one approach that exists, and this is one that we see in networking code, when you try to find an unknown boundary, is to square until you find how many it takes to break the amount. So I would look for 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and just increasingly until maybe it's, it's going to take, you know, something until and maybe it's going to be at a 20, 24, then it breaks. Then what I know is that, um, let's say it breaks in between here because I have the digits written. Then, then the only thing I need to do is I know that my boundary is between these two and in these, I'm going to do a binary search. So you start with the exponential search and when you break, you switch to a binary search. And that's what I'm going to do here. And that's supposed to be probably the fastest way to do it. Um, so I'm going to the next exponent, uh, I'm going to do count or is going to be fine. So I'm going to do an exponent search and the exponent search. I want it to return the below and above starting at one. Uh, I'll start at 2 because I know 2 is already too small for it. Uh, and my boundary is going to be 1 trillion. And then when I do that, then I will do a binary search of below and above and what I'm looking for is indeed 1 trillion still and I will find the best value that goes under. So my exponential search, uh, the way I'll do it is that n will give me you know, my lower value and this is going to be uh, my breaking point. So I will count or uh, and to the power of two no, 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 to be uh, I'm going to truncate the value. This is going to be the only one. Uh, 
uh, whoops, that's going to be, uh, uh, I need to pass the craft to each of these. So I will count ore for an amount of fuel and uh, that's going to give me a count. Oops. If the count is greater than the freighting point, what I'm returning is old N and N as a range. If the count is smaller than or equal to the breaking point, then search from n to the breaking point. Oh, I need my graph, my stupid, stupid graph. All right. That's my exponential search. The binary search is going to be annoying because I need to find the uh, So I will want to cut halfway through between below and above. So uh, it's going to be above minus below and I'm integer division, right? Uh, so if I have 25 and then 2, that's going to give me 12. It's going to go on to 1 below. the halfway point otherwise I will end up doing stuff by zero in some places uh, so I will count that one when do I know that I break so I will search so if count whore. if I try with my halfway point and if the count is Well, if the count is equal to what I need, which would be amazing, they want to have the max amount of fuel, so I can just return uh, yeah, I can return half. They want the maximum amount of fuel, maximum yeah, not the maximum amount of ore. Now if count is smaller. Tend to break, but uh, you know, that means I finish my search, right? So I'm going to finish it here. I haven't implemented a binary search in years. That should be the result x for that one, because it means that you know I've I've started at between two and five, and then I've got in my first half to be a three, and then if that didn't work, then I got it at four, and I reduced the other one. I should get them to meet halfway through. Uh, I think that for the test, they still gave me the other example, so I'll be able to test them the same. Yeah. Oh, I 
this is smaller than the breakpoint, um, then I do my binary search again. But now it's the half point and the above and the break that goes in there. I'm very not consistent with my other thing. And if the count is higher than the break. Oh, wait. That's the other thing, right? I'm starting from below until the half. And if here I'm in a different one, I'm going to go from half to above. And the break. And that should be my count. So I'm going to update my assertions on this one. So um, to make this simpler, I'm going to call this max. Max fuel of G for with this parameter and that will let me just make my tests a bit easier by taking the breaking point amount. So uh, how are they? They still have the same breaking point. Answer equal uh, the value they wanted is my oops breaking point is going to be this uh, day fourteen. Is it just called maximize max fuel? from G and this and that's the 2201736 that will be this count in here and this is where we see if I know how to do a binary search or if I don't uh, oh, max fuel does not exist. Of course not, it's not exported. Max fuel to. Yep, I got an infinite loop. if it's going to be in the binary search or the exponential. I'm pretty sure it's going to be in the binary search actually because the exponential search is kind of straightforward. A hundred iterations is going to be plenty enough. Oh yeah. Um, load the module, make sure it's there. search. Okay, so it's the boundary condition. I clearly have one of these. Uh, I thought my halfway point would be here, but I'm guessing it's might just be what I need here. Nope, let me trace it again. Okay. So let's say some bill. I'll debug it because And what I'm 
doing is this is my halfway point. Oh, okay. So my half is equal. Oh, yeah, it's equal to. So this is true. Oh, I get it. Uh, if count is greater than this, and my half is the belong. Right. I think that's the thing. No, because I'm above, I'm equal to the peel. But my count is green. Here we go. Just this should be enough, and because those are a disjunction, I can just do them. No, an or. Close on this. Does this end now? Here we go. Oh, that was fast. Okay, let's see if it's correct though. R3, uh, CT. Nope, I don't want to run all of them. I just want to run this one sweet. It's wrong. I'm getting a flat of it. It's always the same answer. Uh, what am I doing? My count or is. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to do good old print statement debugging on this one. And here I'm going to have as parameters below uh, Maybe it's this logic that's not good enough. Boom. Okay, so I'm starting my search clearly at this point. Here, here, that's good. That's still reasonable. Oh, uh, I think I get it. Uh, we'll see. Now, knowing that this one is good, I'm going to add here this halfway point to the list. It's weird though because okay now now it ends it didn't but now it does okay so uh, and we'll see what we get with this let's start early on this one here I'm supposed to end on this value. So the first row, I'm testing something that is already way above it. I think just based on the number of digits, this is seven digits. Uh, this is eight digits and this one has, yeah, nine. Hmm. I should be looking uh, between these two numbers. So I'm already going way above on this. So the first thing here is not good enough. If 
my count is below my breakpoint, this is what I should be doing. Oh yeah, here I don't need to do it. Am I passing the breakpoint row? Oh, that should be good. What is up with that? Boy. All right, let's get to the starting point here. I'll, I'll start with the lowest one because 46, uh, 400, 600. Okay. That's the right search. So here's the thing, right? I should keep this below point on each single iteration. Oh, uh, I think I swapped these. If my count is greater, I need to go lower. If my count is lower because I want to find the exact one, I guess. Is this it? Let's see. Yeah. Okay, let's get rid of the debug output. Now we got it. New R3 shell. Uh, and advent. Race 40. 25 milliseconds to find what should be my point. I like this. This is fast. Hopefully it's right. It's not worth being fast if we're wrong. And it worked. All right. So we found the result for the 14. So, um, yeah. Ooh, was I already on this one? That means I might have had the wrong intro to this video, but this would be on par. So see you again next time for part 15. Have a good day.